Let's check in with Strider before we get this thing underway. What's the vibe out there in the lineup? How are, how are competitors looking? Well, they're looking good. John was the first one in the lineup and, you know, came out and set himself up in the lineup behind the boil. So he's definitely off to the side of the boil, behind the peak, so to speak. But Kolohe has done that as well. So they're pretty far off to the right right now, trying to, you know, settle into positioning here. When the set comes, everything could change. I mean, we've seen the video of John underwater, duck diving and moving around underwater. So who knows what's going to happen once the set shows up. He might just do that and go under and duck dive and come up on the other side of Kolohe somehow. But, you know, it's just impressive to watch the head space and watch these surfers that are watching it and, and Jim try, trying to figure out, okay, I'm going to sit here, my head's going to go there. It's, it's almost like they're watching each other so closely. It's great to see that inside and watching them this close in the lineup. We love it, Strider. We'll be checking in with you throughout the final when we get this thing underway in just a, a couple of moments' time. But, Peter, we've been talking about this wave, how, how it's a little difficult. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Sunset in some ways. You know, it, it's not like uh, at this size... You just completely have your way with it. That inside section so hard to read and a lot more water in the face of this wall than some of the other locations on tour. Yeah, it's a deep water wave. That's what, you know, there's the Sunset Beaches, the uh, Margaret Rivers. Um, I'm trying to, you know, correlate another wave that has that kind of deep water feel. I mean, this wave breaks in, you know, 12 feet of water comparatively to a lot of the waves on tour, like, you know, i.e. a chopo or a pipeline, which breaks in four to five feet of water. And, uh, you know, to be generally, we used to see that there was guys who were more comfortable in, in big water and, and less comfortable in shallow water. But now, I mean, obviously, everyone's adapted and gotten better and better. And John, by far, is, is super comfortable in those really shallow water waves. He knows how to read the, the, the way to get underneath the ledge and, and then even these bigger, deeper water waves. I mean, this, to me, the, the best wave that I can kind of correlate this to is the wave that is directly in front of John's house that he grew up in. Um, it's called Pupakea. It is, it's to a T. Big Pupakea rides, the, you know, it's solid. It's got a barrel here and there, but it's a deeper water type of wave. And I think that he can just tap into that style of, of riding waves. You know, and even uh, his shaper lives just down the way that's in, you know, eye shot of, of that wave specifically too. So, I mean, the, the equipment you know, is dialed in. A beautiful Sunday. And uh, we are just moments away from getting this thing started. The crowd is building, and Barton Lynch is in the mix with the locals. Yeah, Blakey, we're down here with the crowd. It's standing room only. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon, and things have really warmed up now that wind's died off. Hey, who's going for Kolohe and Dino in this final? Okay, guys. Oh, oh, not much support. What about John John? <laughs> All right, there you have it. John John Florence, the crowd favourite. Things about to kick off. Here we go, final. Margaret River Pro Drug Aware 2017. Woo! Bring it on. <laughs> that was awkward. <laughs> crowd just went quiet. There was a few fans in there. I think uh, we love an upset. So we'll, we'll see what Kolohe can bring. He's chasing his first CT victory. John Florence, he's eyeing off the yellow jersey. He wants to get back in it. Felt good last year. It is a fresh 35 minutes. Anything can happen. You know, you can't really. I mean, we, we, it's our job to bring history into this thing, but the truth is uh, the ocean really dictates what's going to happen, who's going to get in rhythm, and that's what Kolohe has to, to tap into. It's like, you know what? This is a fresh heat. All I got to do is beat him. I think uh, Kolohe's approach, approach against Geordie Smith, he, he needs that same strategy in this heat. He needs to get the two best waves. Uh, a barrel at the takeoff would be a huge bonus, I think, because it'll be different to, to what John has served up, and that is some of the most unbelievable opening manoeuvres we've ever seen. <laughs> Pretty much, right? I mean, that's truly uh, the case. I mean, it's it, you literally are you just stop and you watch these these turns that he's doing. And, you know, I was, I was looking back on it, I was able to watch I would love to have, you know, just to be able to draw, um, you know, what's going on there because it is so impressive. Well, just uh, 33 and a half minutes to go and uh, a long wait before we kick this thing off. Rich Porter, what was the decision there? Yeah, the, what we do in the final is we try and start on the set. There's no point in having them sit bobbing in the ocean with nothing happening. As it's turned out, it was pretty much a one-wave set, so unfortunately they missed that wave. But you always like to try 
with no time restrictions to get them to get starting on on waves rather than sitting what they're doing as they're doing now. So we wait and wait and wait, uh, pulled the trigger, and the set didn't really work out. Well, anyway, the wind has just come to a standstill. It feels like Rich. Uh, are you sensing that? It's super glassed off, and we all know in this town, once that happens, nine times out of ten, the wind's going to start swinging on shore. So that was another reason why we pulled the trigger on that set, because the wind will come on bit by bit this afternoon. And uh, as much as we have a bit of time up our sleeve, we can't wait indefinitely, but it will come on slowly. Expecting a great battle here, Rich. Uh, good luck. Thanks. With uh, adjudicating this one, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Someone uh, is going to be maybe winning their first CT event. Could have a new ratings leader. A lot of time on the clock, Pete. So true. You know, these 35-minute finals leaving. Now we saw the, the women's go to a 40-minute final. Again, it's up to, you know, commissioner's call in regards to how long these finals are. I mean, I've worked in that commissioner role over my years. And, uh, you know, sometimes there is a, there is actually too long a heat. I, I, I put heats in the water for an hour and 15 minutes, and it was a little bit too long. So, uh, you know, I think it's been pushed to about the limit. 40 minutes for, for this style of, of competitive surfing is about as long as we really need. An hour and what? Hour and 15. Hour and 15. Yeah, Were you in the heat yourself, just <laughs> trying to get a couple more waves? No, no, no. It, it was, it was, it was uh, you know, working with the athletes in regards to, because it was Puerto Escondido, and it was, it was big. And oh, you're talking was, about the big wave tour. I though. was. That's, I was. Hey, come on. It's competitive surfing. Six people in the lineup. I think you need yes. that extra yeah, time on the clock. I do, but I mean, even an hour and 15 was too long. I mean, I think an hour is max there either way. But I mean, I think that in here, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, we're already going to see five minutes disappear, so it's really going to be a 30 minute heat. Well, Ronnie Blakey here with Peter Mel and uh, loving the opportunity to bring you this final between last year's world champion and last year's world number four. And Dino just announcing, I think, his arrival as a consistent performer ready to give it a nudge and have a good uh, chase at a title dream. Again, the maturity, right? I mean, we've seen it time and time again. The guys have put a couple years under your belt, how to win heats. You start to learn how to surf the brakes uh, that, that are on the tour, you know, and uh, you start to kind of tap into those successes and you tune your equipment. Uh, you, know, you know what waves, what good waves look like. It's so cool to see the maturity of these surfers. And what happens is that uh, that level lifts, you know. I mean, John John's put on like we've never seen anybody tear Margaret River like John John has this event. Looking really sharp. He's going to uh, want to tear it apart one final time here. As we see some movement at the takeoff zone, you can see that boil coming into play. John positioning himself a, a little further inside, having a bit of a look at this one. Doesn't get into it though. Just a smaller wave. Wasn't anything special. Well, you know that John's been trying to get that first wave as well. You know, it's paid off for him getting that first initial score. Allows him to build, and he doesn't need a special wave to, to turn a big score in. You know, it uh, just needs a little bit of opportunity, and then he's able to find the turn that'll score big somehow. Still waiting for the first ride to get locked in here in the final. Let's look back on John Florence's world title run in 2016. Well, it didn't start out great, did it, in the very beginning? I mean, there's, I mean, that was uh, a rookie took him down twice. And that was big news. And it actually was here, as you recall, the last second heroics from Kyle. Started to bounce back well, though. Uh, Brazil got himself a win over Jack Freestone. Looked very strong there, his second victory in Rio. And then cracked the final against Mick Fanning at J-Bay, but went down. And that's really where his run started. You know, that win in Brazil, and then he was looking as uh, him and Mick, both, both were actually the guys to beat at J-Bay. And then of course you get into places like the uh, the South Pacific and those those events, and you, you would have to say that John is by far the one to watch there. Yeah, it was a scary moment there in uh, Tahiti at the end of the final with Kelly Slater. He actually got squeezed uh, beneath the lip and the reef. Hurt his knee, but uh, Big props to his medical team, helped to get him back on track. Slight hiccup at Trestles, but rebounded very well in the final three events for a semi, a win in Portugal, where he stitched up the world title and a quarterfinal finish at home, where he just so desperately wants to win. 
Well, what uh, I mean, it's funny. You, you asked me earlier. I'm going to put you now on the spot. Ooh. Like, what, what do you feel like is actually John's weakest event on the tour? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe Bells. Uh, I think he could be dangerous there, but I think he's got the equipment this year to do some more damage at Bells. I oh, think uh, in the past, his boards have looked a little narrow for out there on that flat water. I think now a little less rocker in his boards. I Dial think it, that in. I think he'll be sweet. But uh, I do think John Florence is surfing much better than he did last year, which is a scary prospect. He looks to be more relaxed, and uh, he's going to be hard to stop. He has the opportunity here with a victory to take the ratings lead going into stop three. And Antino is obviously uh, going to make a big jump up the leaderboard as well. It's almost like what Sally said, that sense of belonging. I think that John is definitely having that sense of belonging himself. So our surfers are still waiting for their first bite of the cherry here. Strider Wozolewski out there. How's their positioning, Strider? Yeah, just been watching them. Uh, they started out that heat kind of looking at each other, trying to figure out the posture. And then, you know, John kind of paddled in to try and find something on the backside of a set because they were out of position for it when the wave did come, trying to hold position on the peak to see who was going to be, you know, in priority on the peak to catch the wave. And now it's happened again. They just came to, you know, John will paddle in a little bit, but then kind of look one way and paddle back out and try to get behind him. And Kolohe will just sneakily look over and paddle all the, all the way out into the channel. So they're off to the side of the boil, which is really the takeoff spot. And they just keep kind of dodging themselves out past into the right of the, that boil, which would put them a little out of position. We've seen a few waves come through now that have not been ridden and a few that are outside of them that have they could have been in position for. But their head space trying to get the you know inside space and it's kind of thrown them off for the beginning of the heat and that's why we haven't seen any waves ridden. Well it's almost like what Ronnie had said earlier in regards to uh, getting inside John's head he's kind of there's the Kolohe has done a few posturing up huh. Yeah definitely and and I guess you'd have to do that you know you got to do whatever you can and and I think Kolohe is one of those guys who's ready for you know make a run at it this year he did so well last year you know I ended up in fourth on the tour at the end of the year that's a huge feat in itself to be inside the top five and now he's sitting there looking like he's you know posturing up ready to take down the uh, final like that's against John that's pretty impressive and and, and probably has John kind of going oh you know what's going on here so well, you know, I, I think John's obviously got a lot of confidence though like we talked about and a sense of belonging so this this should be a great battle once we get underway well you know in their junior bouts it was Kolohe had it had it over top of John John when they were juniors it was all Kolohe Wow, that's interesting. I did not know that, but now I do. And uh, you know, this it's <laughs> I saw I saw Jesse Mendez beat Gabriel Medina in this event and Medina ran off the beach and afterward, you know, they had a few inside words with uh, their group and they you know, they were rivals young and and he Jesse Mendez got the nod over Medina quite a bit, so that may, might play into the heat. Well, we've got some movement here. We're going to see our first ride of the final here at the Drugware Market River Pro, and it's Florence up straight into one of those trademark hacks. And again, a better version of the same turn for the second move. Wow. Rolling through to the inside. A bit of foam on the face here. What kind of finish can he get? He's going to bank off the foam there. He's opted for the long sleeve wetsuit now to cover up that elbow. He's wearing a short sleeve steamer earlier on. Let's see the response now from Kolohe. Drives up into a steep section, a beautiful first turn of his own. Bit of foam on the face to negotiate. No problem. As he lines up the inside, needs a big committed hit here. And he is going to bank off it. It just gets a little lost in the white water, blinded by all that spray. Just got swallowed. Now the race out. Looks like Kolohe is going to be making his way in, too. Look how shallow it is there. You can tell John's a, a little rattled on that inside section. Usually, he just stomps across that bit of reef. He's so short-footed. But uh, Andino making his way in, too. What a great exchange to kick off the final. It took a while, but sure they delivered. Did. But uh, I'll tell you, those uh, two turns again by John, just on the outside there, just so, so gorgeous. Uh, you know, it, the speed that he carries throughout the entire maneuver is really a, a big major point of difference. You know, he doesn't slow down. It's just this, you know, the whole curve. It almost feels like he speeds up through it. You know, you watch again here, just sing, you know, right there almost, but he cuts it short. And then again, a lot more committed and hooked it twice. You know, very similar style of turn, but they're so strong that it's hard not to score that. You know, 
again, he finishes it up all the way on the inside, makes sure that he completes the ride. Yeah, you're right. I think right here he's like, okay, I don't want to hit that thing again. <laughs> Let's take a look here from the water. This is right where Strider's sitting, and you see that arc. It's so powerful. It's so fast. It's something where you just do, you know, and this is the layback snap version that he was doing, which I feel like is a much more consistent way. You're actually able to get that back foot higher up in the lip than, than the carve. It's almost more difficult to do the downward carve than it is the layback snap like this. But look at that. It's, it's powerful. Look at all the water. That's that kind of thing that the judges can't deny. When you look at the, the amount of water flying out the back, it's going to be a big number. Really committed first turn. I think uh, you saw during that first move, just the, the nose dip in a little bit, and then it was like John went, OK, first one didn't go exactly to plan. Second move, I'm going to just absolutely mince this, this section. And he just obliterated that wall and finished the wave off very well. Well, and I think that one of the things that you can see that he did as an adjustment, being that we've got the cleaner conditions, is that those first waves are not going to be as difficult anymore because the water isn't as disturbed. Now it's glassy. So you can take those first waves, and it gave him the opportunity with two steep sections on the outside. He sacrificed a little bit of size. It moved in on the reef, and it was steeper. And it paid off because that first wave gave him the opportunity. And look at the number. Yeah, just a 9.63. Nothing out, out of the ordinary for John <laughs> to kick off this heat. And the uh, the response from Andino yet to roll through. A 5.83 for Kolohe. So a pretty big separation in the exchange there. For sure. You know, and it, there's a, a lot. The first turn of, of Kolohe was, was nice, but again, it was a jam. It wasn't that big arc. It didn't, he didn't hold the rail as long. You see, he turns under the lip. You know, it, it, you know, John was substantially higher in the section, which is way more difficult, you know, and that's a major point of difference. And then, of course, the second turn, not nearly as strong. Uh, you know, and the finish uh, are very similar. But, I mean, if you're going to take a comparison of the two types of turns, they both did layback snaps, but John, you're going to see, is going to be, it would be much more up in top of the lip, which is much more difficult to do. Just under 21 minutes to go. Barton Lynch, let's get uh, your thoughts on that opening exchange. <laughs> Fireworks, mate. But I suppose the thing is, Kolohe did everything right. He held the inside. He kind of tried to be authoritative, but he let John just slide away that little bit. And if, if you're going to do it, you've got to do it strongly and authoritatively. He gave him enough room to slip away, and it didn't matter that he had the inside all that time. To me, if you're going to do it, you've got to do it right, and you've got to be tight next to the guy. You can't let him slip away, because he'd sort of made a statement, I'm going to own this start, I'm going to have your inside, and when you're against someone as in form as John is, that's most probably the right thing to do. Get in their grill a bit, rattle them early, and try and try and get some momentum going your way, but you can't do it and let him slip away like he let John slip away and he just got away enough to create that opportunity and good night because that was that was one of those waves again you know nine six threes an incredible score strider what a joy for you mate floating out there in the ocean all day yeah you know what absolutely amazing and and the reality of the situation is being out here in the lineup seeing it live you really get the point of difference you can really understand why the, the point spread was so big you know on the on the broadcast is as amazing as it is and all the angles and all of the stuff that you're getting from the broadcast, you really can't take in the actual speed of the waves, the contour, where they're doing their turn. And now we'll get to see it again as you see John coming into this wave to back up his nine. Look at this thing, big bank off the top right there, flying across the section, looking for more, sweeps the corner. We'll see what he gets done on the inside, boys, as he's still tearing away. And he's going to look for the big finish on the inside here. It'll be a good backup. Probably not as strong as the 9.63, but Florence makes sure he gets that finish. But you do lose a little bit through the, the camera. I love watching the slow-mo replays. You get to see how inverted John's first turn options are, just how upside down he approaches that carving turn. But he's about to take a, a pretty healthy lead to the uh, 18 and a half minutes remaining on the clock. On fire. So on fire, you know, and you feel like this wave's going to better the 583 of John's. Again, uh, he just knows the timing of this wave. You know, he knew that that turn, he had to commit to it, but he actually couldn't commit all the way because he had to move down the line further because the wave was starting to run off. And John senses that. 
it's something that's intuitive to him. You know, he doesn't have to consciously even think about it. It just happens, you know. And again, this one was moving so quickly down the line. See that turn gets cut short, but it still holds all that speed to get to back to the open face to complete this ride. You know, and he's going to back up the 963, and he's going to give him a ton of freedom to get really creative in this back half of the heat. He senses where that rock is, and uh, he's going to stay away from that one. Is that drone view? But again, that snapping turn that keeps the momentum going down the line. You know, he knows that timing and where and what type of turn is going to have to happen in order to to make sure that he completes the wave. And sure enough, there he is, a, a pretty good number to back up the 963. Just over 17 minutes to go. Love watching John's approach off the bottom. There's so much emphasis when we're commentating uh, about bottom turns. Uh, you talk about Julian Wilson and the separation he gets from the wave in order to set up his approach to the lip. John Florence, he doesn't want to wash off that much speed. He doesn't do a big drawn out bottom turn. He, he cuts it a little short. He wants to carry all the momentum into his major maneuvers. And as a result, he, he kind of lets go of all that speed in the top turn rather than washing it off. On the it's bottom. true. You, know, you don't score points for good bottom turns. No, you don't, right? I mean, it sets up the maneuver, which you do score points on, and he's basically saying to, to you know, he's not saying it to anybody, really. He's doing it for himself, but to, to be able to have all that speed and, and do it in the maneuver, you know, whereas uh, Julian Wilson will, will use that long, elongated bottom turn and still hold a lot of speed because he has great technique, but he does it so he can actually pick the section to do the turn on. Whereas John, will, he's doing the same thing, but his bottom turns are starting so much earlier that he holds a lot more speed than anybody else on tour into those maneuvers. When you look at uh, Italo, how much attention do you pay to his bottom turns? Uh, None. <laughs> Very little because you're so intrigued by what he's going to do uh, at the, the top of the wave. But I bet you he starts his bottom turns early too because he wants a lot of speed. I mean, generally that lot of speed is going to allow you to get more lift in the air. But it's also a timing thing. You got to get to the lip at the right time. So you just it depends on where you're you're starting that bottom turn. You're seeing what that section is going to give to you. And sometimes you'll start that bottom turn earlier to be able to have that speed down the line to get to that section where the ramp is going to be. Whereas Julian, I think, is a prime example of somebody who sits off the bottom and sets it up that way. You know, he sets it up with compressing, and then he's able to kind of compress out of that bottom turn to have enough speed and still have a very strong top turn. But he's picking that timing and picking the canvas. It's going to be uh, people just rethinking their approach to tackling those high impact turns after this event because the speed in which John's executed some of his major maneuvers, well, it's been untouchable. And he is well out in front now. A 7.5 on his second ride. And then Dino now looking for a 7.14. 17.14, I should say. Pete's core total. Well, we do remember, you know, the very beginning of this event, there was uh, just one wave that John put up on his Insti and onto his social feeds, which was an incredible backflip, and it was done here right at main break. You've been I've really been, I've been beating this, huh? Yeah, I have. I'm going to do everything I can. You know, John <laughs> just to can't see. hear you. <laughs> well, no, it's energy. It's energy. Um, you know, if everyone online listening right now will will it to happen, it might happen. If you build it, that will come. <laughs> here we go. Thank you, Ryan. I want to see this kid do one. And Dino, looking to break combination on this ride. Draws off the bottom. Snaps away under the lip. Again, just fading back, losing a bit of speed off the top. Needs a huge turn here. Crushes the end section, the oncoming section. But I think he's going to need a stronger start to break combination. 14 minutes to go. Now, that one's a little tough. It had some ribs in the face, a little bumpy section, so he wasn't really able to kind of lay into it. Didn't have that nice, smooth section in front of him. But he did well. You know, I think that this is going to be another pretty good score. But again, he's got to right now, at least, the least he has to do is match, you know, the 7.5 so that uh, he's not in combo anymore. And that 7.14 will get him out of there. But then he needs a perfect 10, right? So you want to kind of chip away. You want to get the, at least an 8 maybe would help. I just don't think it's going to go quite that high. Take a look at the replay and hit, you know, he, he decided to take the first wave of the set because it is glassy. So it looked like it had a pretty good opportunity, but you can see it kind of flattened and it had those lumpy sections in the in the lip. That was a nice section there, but you 
got there and it almost felt like he, he did that bottom turn a little too far down the way but didn't have the speed when it got nice and vertical. End section hit was the, the best we've seen in the final so far, but we'll see what kind of payoff he gets for the first couple of moves. Chloe serving in his third career CT final. Hasn't had a victory yet. And as he makes his way back to the takeoff zone, we're going to take a quick breather. There is just over 12 and a half minutes remaining. And Dino chasing a two-wave total of 17.14. Welcome back. We've been uh, reflecting on some of the great history that has unfolded here at Margaret River over the years and a long list of some very uh, exceptional former champs. I still use some of those dance moves. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but uh, some of the greats have been victorious here in the past. Peter Mel on fire here. No, 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 on no. On finals day. As we see John Florence close. up once again into that first section. <laughs> Just can't get enough of that front side jam. As he looks to get rid of a 7.5 and push further ahead here. There it is, John. Check the section. Banks off the inside and gets another hit in. So just to get you updated, Chloe Andino on his previous ride of 6.57 wasn't enough to break combination. Was looking for a two-wave total of 17.14 and we'll see if that requirement goes any higher with this last ride for Florence. It will. Uh, I think this is going to go into the excellent range. I don't think it's quite 963 worthy, but it is definitely going to add points. You know, John John again packed in the maneuvers, gets it all the way done, all the way to the end. You know, willing him to find that section just to him to cut loose and show us some of his aerials, which we haven't seen in this event from him. We know he has it. He doesn't need it. I mean, if he's going to get 9.5s for, for carves, why would you? But um, I'm just hoping it can happen just for the sake of our entertainment. John Florence, only four career CT event wins. You know, they're not easy to come by, those victories. He's had a lot more finals than that. But uh, potentially wrapping up a fifth here, waiting on his last score to drop. Nine minutes to go. Let's have a look at the replay. So he packs it in again, taking the first wave of the set. That first vertical section, that big patented layback carve. Then he mixes it up, he gets that body torque. He really is one of those guys that really accentuates the top half of his body, even though it's quiet. But in the maneuvers, it actually is a, is a big asset to why his turns are so big. That the part that, because he, he's torquing his body, but he's also utilizing the entire rail of the surfboard. You know, a lot of surfers will use just the tail edge, but him, he uses the entire rail, and it's so hard to do. I mean, that thing is buried all the way up to like 12 inches away from the nose. And even on a carve like that, it, it, it is, you know, again, it's easy to be able to push off that back foot, but when you want to have a big, powerful arc, look at the, how much the rail is saturated all the way up to the nose. I mean, literally the tip of the nose. Soaked. Soaked. Soaked that Drenched. Rail. And, you know, again, he's pushing it all the way through, and that's the style of surfing that is so much, and that separates him from, from everyone else. Guess what? What? John's gone at 19 points plus once again. A 9.4 dropping for this ride, and he has now put Kolohe in a very undesirable situation, There's, chasing a two-wave total of 19.04. This, this performance here um, in each and every one of his heats, I mean, the only heat being, you know, under 14 points is this first-round heat, but it is by far... I mean, it's probably 20 points, and I, mean, I wouldn't say it's probably that much. Ten, at least 10 points higher than any other heat total ever in competition. Right? Amazing. You backing me on that? Sorry, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, the heat totals that he's put together, I mean, all of them added up. Amazing. Yeah, this has got a, you know. I mean, the, for the, fantasy, the it's 13, by far. Oh, big time. But the 13.67 is 
just going to drag the average I mean, down slightly, but it's going to be comparable to what Felipe did in the final back in 2014. So that's the only other highest heat event 2015. total. 2015. Point Sorry. total, I guess. 2015, I that final Felipe went on a mad tear through the rounds, had a, a number of big, high big scoring heat totals, right? Heat totals. But not compared to this. Not compared to this. No. This is something this is special. For sure. And so deserving those big numbers for those really fast full rail calves. Kolohe trying to get into this one. Big bottom turn into a nice carve right in the pocket. Not getting that second turn option though that John is finding out here at the moment. You can see the just a little out of texture on the face of this wave or up in the lip at least as Kolohe goes into that final section. Tries to plug an in section hit but can't stick it. Six and a half minutes to go. This one's uh, it's getting to that point, Pete. It's demoralizing for, for Kolohe. I mean, uh, you, you would hear those score totals, and you know, that 9.4 would have been just a, a full gut punch, right? I mean, you, you feel like you're almost there. You feel like you can do it, but at this point, it's like, okay, six minutes to go. You're giving, you know, you can see he's giving 100%. He's not, you're not conceding by any means, but it's like, hey, you know, this just the numbers aren't comparative. And, uh, you know, it gets a little bit tough. You know, it's been a, been a long morning, too. You know, the wind's changing slightly. Let's see what he does here. So a nice big peak, he accentuates the bottom turn. Again, just not the same amount of speed carried through the maneuver that we're seeing from John. I, I mean, that to me is really substantial difference and it's, it's coming down to, you know, where he's starting that bottom turn. Another nice arc again. I mean, this wave is well surfed. You know, I would love to see him complete that final maneuver, but there is just a sub distinct difference in the speed within the maneuvers. We, we touched on it early on, just the, the difference in approach off the bottom, but in some ways I don't think Someone like Kalohe can, can change too much. He still used his approach to get to this final heat. And, you know, he's only getting stopped by the best surfer in the world right now, who's put together one of the best event performances of all time. So he can still hold his head up high. I think uh, Martin Potter hit the nail on the head with his observation of Kalohe's quarterfinal. There was kind of uh, warning signs there. It wasn't like Kalohe was establishing himself as the best surfer in the bottom half of the draw. He just out competed uh, or strategized Geordie Smith in their battle. He got the barrel and that was really the difference in that exchange. Yeah, and, uh, and that goes down to a, a big part of competing well is wave choice. And Kolohe was by far the best surfer in choosing the waves. Look at this recap here. This is the first 9.63 two gigantic forehand gaffs. Again, just cleans it up through the inside, completes his ride. But I mean, the meat of the score came from those two solid maneuvers on the outside. It just doesn't seem no matter what game plan his opponents take into their heats, whether they try and pressure him for position on the takeoff zone at the moment. No one's really able to put up much of a fight to this guy. Well, and when you're putting numbers like that, I mean, if you can take any wave and still put up a 7-5, and be you know a smaller wave or anything. I mean, that, that he, he's talk about wanting to be able to surf your own event. John's been able to do that. He's just been able to surf his own event. It's been fun to watch. Love watching these recaps. Well, I mean, if you're going to put together, I mean, it's, you've got yourself a pretty amazing event clip with uh, John's performance. I mean, it's going to be, I mean, he, you know, oh, it's the next best maneuver we've seen in the whole event. You know, like he's been able to do it each and every heat. He keeps showing us something that is just truly amazing. Yeah, we haven't even seen the backflip. <laughs> it's coming, Pete. It's coming. If not here at some stage during the year, we'll see it. Just over three minutes to go. All I have to do is go to his Instagram. And John Florence just needs to better a 9.4 to uh, up his heat score total at the moment. A good chance of doing it. He's got priority out there at the moment. And uh, it's getting to the point now where it's completely out of reach for Kolohe. Just getting two waves out here in three minutes is a, a very difficult feat. Again, of course, there's the update on the uh, heat totals. Like uh, number 12, John John Florence, a 19.03, a 19.27, an 18.04. Can't believe that 18 points is even in there. And two more 19-point heats. His heat total is averaged. His average again is just going to be through the roof going into Bell's Beach. Two and a half minutes ago, and Dino having a little bit of a look at an insider. Kind of had to, to make a move for something pretty soon to have the slightest chance at, at getting back in this heat. But these aren't 
big set waves. Not like the scoring rides from Florence. So he'd have to do something truly exceptional to get into the excellent range of brake combination. The time is ticking by. And the 24-year-old Florence, in his seventh year on the championship tour, already a world title under his belt, is on his way to his fifth championship tour victory from 10 finals. So his half, half time times he makes the final, he wins at half time, yeah. It's pretty good. You'd take that. You'd also learn a lot from those five losses, probably more so than anything. I mean, I think if you were to look at his last few finals, right, I mean, he's won them. So he's been able to take those losses and, and turn them around into successes. And he's getting more consistent in those in that final series. Yeah, it fell short of the, the final on the Gold Coast, but still a semi is his best ever finish there. So the title defense well and truly on track. The ratings lead will be his in just over a minute, as we see Andino just making his way through to the inside. This is a fun position for us to see. There we go. In. Nice air reverse. There we go. One minute to go. He's left that charge a little late, but one of the turns of the contest. Haven't seen too many big airs on the end section. We that haven't. Was, that was awesome. And that's the kind of section he needed to do that. I mean, good adjustment in this final to move into the inside. Just go, you know what? I'm just going to flare up and, and uh, make my presence known and get the crowd involved. You see, look at this section. It's perfect for it. Nice steep ramp. Carries the speed into it. Gets the grab. Super clean. Releases the grab. See everything shift forward. Let's go. Lands with butter right there. You just stuff the nose into the section like that. And uh, it just rotates around. Look at how far he finishes up on the board. No worries. He's done probably 2,000 of those in his lifetime. 2,000? Is that all? <laughs> you think more? Yeah, I think a lot more. More than 2,000. Oh, well, he's been it's... doing them since he was about six. OK. <laughs> uh, well, OK. But in competition, that was, uh, that was pretty impressive stuff. 5,000. Very tricky end section. And he has uh, stomped a 7.03 to finish off his effort, a great effort here. But John Florence, victorious at the Dragalware Market River Pro. What an effort, one of the most dominant performances, the most dominant performance we've seen Pretty throughout the Championship Tour event. Pretty easy to say. Unbelievable stuff. You know, coming into contact with that reef during the semi-final, did slow him down at all, Pete. Got treated, got back out there and recovered well. That, I mean, that's a great adjustment, right? I mean, to see that that have that happen, sometimes you'd say that it could have uh, changed your trajectory. Nope, he's an asteroid. He just kept plowing through it. We're going to have so much to break down in the post show. Obviously, uh, some very interesting things unfolding on finals day here. We'll get a chat with John in just a moment. But uh, he just didn't back off, did he? No, it, you know, it, it, he served his own event. And, uh, you know, how many gears can you have in the gearbox? I mean, that was, there was 10 gears to me. I mean, it was ninth, he was playing around in ninth and 10th gear pretty much the entire event. Look at the heat score total there, 19.03. And Dino just couldn't match him. Found a 7.03 in the, the late stages with a really nice air reverse on the end section, but still couldn't break combination. John Florence in position there with Strada Wozolewski. Let's hear what the winner has to say. Johnny, uh, I think you had five 19 plus total heats out there here at uh, Margaret River. Not a bad way to run through the event. Oh my gosh, I'm so stoked right now, especially just like the wind kind of stayed clean and that last year was so much fun. Uh, I love serving this wave, just going fast and doing big turns. It's one of the most fun things in the world. Talk to us a little bit about the equipment. It seems to be a big part of your win here. It seems you got some foam, a little flatter uh, nose rocker, and a little bit of lift in the tail there. That board just looks like it's on fire for you. Oh uh, yeah, this board's insane. Paisal really worked his magic on this one. Um, it's such a, it's a pretty unique shape too, and I feel like it's just been so good in these waves. I rode it a bit at home this winter, and they're so fast and real loose. And, um, yeah, such an amazing board for this wave because it just fits in and you're able to ride a little smaller board and kind of drive through turns and stuff and it makes it feel like you're snowboarding. <laughs> How about being back on top of the Jeep leaderboard? Oh, I'm stoked, super stoked. Well, it's like, it's been a year, so 
I can't think too much about that, just kind of go to Bells with a bit of confidence and stay focused and um, just going to have fun. I hope we get some fun waves at Bells. Yeah. Well, congratulations on winning here. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.